Hey everyone, it's thrifting time. Mark and I had a chance to visit a few other thrift stores while we were out filming things, so let's see what weird stuff we can find. I always like to start off over in the media section, because I'm always on the lookout for like old video games and old PC games, but I do enjoy looking at like these giant boxed sets of VHS tapes. This is a Roy Rogers collection, it's a 10 video pack. This is the kind of thing you would probably find in like the $4 DVD bin at Walmart now, and it would be just two DVDs. Now here's something I've never found at Goodwill before. These are DLT tapes for DLT tape backup drives. I have no idea if that's a good price or not. It's kind of interesting though. But then I saw this, not, not Bill Clinton, the video professor. Do you guys remember these infomercials? Try my product. I think I will try your product, Mr. Video Professor. We'll take a closer look at this at the end of the video. I've always been curious about these. I also found a neat CD over here. This is the uh, KZON Collectibles Volume 2. That was a local radio station here, and this is all the way back from 1994. I like to check out these local radio station collections, so I'm going to grab that. Right next to that CD, I found a copy of Microsoft Back Office Server version 4.0. This was released in 1997, so that's a pretty old piece of software, and I'm sure it was more than the just a few dollars that it is here back when it was released. And speaking of Microsoft, I also found this uh, Microsoft Heroes Happen Here photography book, and I believe this was made for a 2008 launch event for the different pieces of software you see down there at the bottom. I don't know if this was given out for free at the show or what, but it says here it was printed in Italy and it, it feels really high quality. It's a, it's a really heavy book, even for its size. This is a pretty neat piece of Microsoft history and I don't know if companies do things like this for product launches anymore. This seems like it was pretty expensive to produce. And of course, over in the books, Mark found some cookbooks for himself. He, he likes to collect old cookbooks and I like that one there, that Jack Daniels cookbook. Jack Daniels recipes tend to be either really good or really gross, so that should be interesting. They also had this cooking with beer book, and I just liked it because of the old Barnes & Noble price tag on it. It's kind of funny the random things you find lying around, like this was over with the books and media. It's a Minnie Mouse collectible mug. It's from Applause, and I'm, I'm wondering if this was something they actually sold at Disneyland or something. I'm sure it wasn't cheap if it was. That medallion thing at the top is weird too. I don't know what purpose that serves except for only making one side of the mug usable. And I always like to check out the board games because sometimes you find old PC games and stuff, but this time I found a really old board game. This is all the way from 1962. It's a game called Twixt from 3M Company? I didn't know they made board games. Although I have seen old board games like this before that are made to look like books, you know, to go on a bookshelf. But I just like the aesthetic of this whole thing, and I love when I find things all the way back from the 60s at Goodwill. It, it just makes you wonder, you know, what's the story behind the thing? How long did this actually sit on somebody's bookshelf? Doesn't sound like a super interesting game, though. I don't, I don't even know if they produce this game anymore. But yeah, 1962, that's really neat to find at Goodwill. From the 3M company. I'm going to have to look more into that. Now over in the electronics, I found something that I never find at Goodwill, a Sony Betamax player. Look at how clunky this thing is. I love the big clunky buttons and the you can feel it like when the door opens and stuff, the big heavy clunk. I was really tempted to buy this and I, I do kind of want a Betamax player, but this is like an early one and it's like I said, just huge. I don't want something quite this big. I know that they got smaller over time. What a neat thing to find, though. Just little knobs and switches and buttons everywhere. And of course, I gotta, I gotta play with all of them. Now, right above it was what I thought was a VCR, but then I saw that it said DVD on it. This is actually a karaoke DVD player. I've never seen one like this before. It's, it's kind of ugly, to be honest with you. The, the white is weird. But yeah, there's not much to it. it. It doesn't seem to be that much different from a regular DVD player. It, I think it just plays special karaoke discs as well, but it will play just regular video DVD. Oh, it even says it plays VCD on there. Now this is a PC to TV device, and this is kind of interesting. This lets you hook up your computer to, to display it on a television. 
I don't have much use for this now, but I actually did kind of use these quite a bit a long time ago when I used to hook computers up to TVs for retro gaming emulation, you know, before Raspberry Pis and things existed. Now this caught my eye and I thought it was like an old water cooler and I really had no idea what this was. It had these buttons on it and stuff and then Mark looked at it and said he thought it was for rice. And uh, that's, that's what this is for. This is some sort of like rice hopper dispenser thing. I guess you push those things and you can see there's even rice down in there still but you push the different amounts that you want it dispenses it into that little little tray down there. It looks like this thing's seen a lot of use. But if we open it up, you can see down inside here. I wonder if this is from like a restaurant or something. I've never seen anything like this at Goodwill either. I keep quite a bit of rice at my house, but not, not that much. Now here is a organ, which I see quite a bit at Goodwill, but this is a Wurlitzer one, which I thought was kind of neat just because that's the type of organ that's at Organ Stop Pizza, which I did a video on way back in the past when I first started the channel. But I love that place, and I love just playing with these things too because, again, all kinds of knobs and buttons and switches. And this one even has a uh, little cassette recorder on it. It probably doesn't work, though. Now, every Goodwill usually has one electric organ, but this one had two. <laughs> I never see two at Goodwill. This one seemed to be from, like, a slightly different era, though. The buttons are different, and the rocker switchers are different than from what I'm usually seeing on these. But let's go ahead and move on to our next Goodwill store. Now that I'm looking at this storefront, I'm, I can't even remember where this Goodwill is. There's so many in the Phoenix area that you just drive by them all the time now. Now this is the worst copy of Halo 2 I have ever seen. The steel book case is just completely rusted. This is sad because I do, I do really like this game and I've been on the lookout for this edition of it, the Steelbook version. Obviously I'm not going to grab this one, and not surprisingly the disc isn't in here either, of course. I wonder what the disc looked like. Because this thing is just trashed. L look at that, it's just rusted. Speaking of video game stuff though, I found this Pac-Man Connect set. And this is kind of neat, I guess it's like a little Pac-Man roller coaster thing, you can get a, a better idea of what it looks like here on the back. I never really got into Kinex when I was a kid. I was more of a Lego kid. But I do like Pac-Man and Namco stuff, so... I'll take a look at it. The, the pieces probably aren't all there, though. Now this is interesting, this little uh, computer. It It's obviously a calculator, and I think it's supposed to play some math games and things, too. Unfortunately, the camera didn't focus on the instructions when I was trying to film it. But I thought it was pretty cute, like this might have been something neat to kind of hack and put like a screen in and a Raspberry Pi or something, but the plastic case is all chipped up and destroyed and there's just tons of pieces rattling around inside. Now, I, I do always enjoy looking at the camcorders as well, this is a Sony Handycam. I, I do kind of want to grab one of these one day to play with, but I don't think I'll grab it from Goodwill because I'm, I'm never very confident that these are actually going to work from here. and. Oftentimes, just like this one, they're missing the battery. Right next to it was a uh, kind of more modern version of the same Sony Handycam. This one probably had a better chance of working, but again, no battery or any other accessories, so this will probably be something that I have to buy off of eBay or something. That's not what I thought it was. I thought it was a cooler radio than that. Now, this Goodwill had a lot of really big old pieces of electronics too, like this is an old slide projector and it is just solid metal and very heavy. And right below it is a very cheap plasticky thing from Sharper Image. I'm not sure what this is, it looks like an Imperial probe droid or something, but I think it's some sort of clock, but those look like speakers on the side, that probably projects the time or something up under the wall. And surprisingly the batteries aren't all blown out, but you find lots of cheap, sharper image crap at Goodwill. But down here is another huge, old piece of equipment. This is some sort of uh, adding machine or something, or calculator. But uh, this thing's actually heavier than that slide projector. And this Goodwill seemed to have a lot of, um, you know, older and vintage sewing machines, which I see a lot of at Goodwill, but this one I really enjoyed seeing. This is an old one from Montgomery Ward and it looks to be in really good shape. And I, I just love finding things with Montgomery Ward logos at thrift stores. 
And I do like the whole aesthetic of this thing as well. I don't know if you could describe a sewing machine as classy looking, but I think it looks classy. Now here is an old utility cart from, I'm not sure how you pronounce the na name of the company, if it's Solder or S Souder, but these are those like cheap press board things that you would find at Kmart, which is probably where this is from. And it's got a date code of September 16th, 1996 on it. Wow. I can't believe this thing's been sitting just not put together for that long. Um, obviously the box is water damaged, but when I took a closer look at the stuff inside, it seemed to be okay. And see, if we take a look, usually when this kind of like press board gets wet, it like swells up and gets ruined, but that actually looks okay. It's just kind of a neat thing to see. I can't believe it's been sitting in the box since 1996. I, I bet you that's from Kmart. <laughs> Before we head out of this store, though, I, I wanted to show this. This is an old like flat panel TV and monitor graveyard. I used to see the same kind of thing with CRT televisions many years ago at Goodwill, so it's interesting to see that we're entering a new generation of TVs that are being dumped off. There's even a bigger one here just chilling on the couch with no stand or anything. Now let's head out of here and take a closer look at what I picked up. Let's take a closer look at what I picked up. I grabbed this KZON Collectibles Volume 2 CD and like I mentioned earlier in the video I, I normally like collecting these old like radio station collection CDs, and this one was uh, to benefit the Child Crisis Center, and it was from 1994. When I looked at it, the only song I really recognized was that Melissa Etheridge, Come to My Window, which it turns out it's like an acoustic version of it. And I'll just show you the liner notes real quick. It uh, just kind of explains what this is. I, I actually gave this a listen, and I really don't care for it that much, so I'll probably be, you know, dropping this back off at Goodwill. I basically rented it for 99 cents, I think is what this cost. So that'll be going back to Goodwill. The other thing that I grabbed was this uh, Video Professor Starter Pack, just because I remember seeing the commercials for this on like late night TV all the time. And the way that I understood this works is it was a, it worked, it was a subscription service. So like you called, they sent you one of the lessons for free and they signed you up for automatic billing and they sent you more out each month and it was a fortune and it was kind of a big ripoff and scam. So I was surprised to see it like in retail packaging and I, I think that's an old Best Buy price tag. So that this was really interesting to find. This guy is such a goober, but we can just take a closer look and it comes with some free bonus software also, McAfee Virus Scan and Serato Smart Home Manager. Transform your household into a well-oiled machine with home organizational and financial... Ugh, boring. Probably won't take a look at that. Uh, let's take a look at what's inside, though, what you got for your $29.99. It's just a bunch of CDs and paper sleeves. Oh, so this is uh, lessons... What is this? Yeah, like lesson one for how to learn Outlook for 2000 and 2003. Outlook, you've got Microsoft Word... Jeez. Ooh, the internet. That that should be interesting. <laughs> oh, look at that. There's a Macromedia logo on there. I'm sure that's what this uses to run. Oh, then there's Windows, XP, ME, and 98. Oh, and then our two free pieces of software, which you know, nobody cares about that. But I think we should go over to my Windows 98 PC and maybe pop one or two of these in just to kind of get a good chuckle. Okay, so this is my Windows 98 PC, and I actually just set this up. My old Windows 98 PC that I used to use died. So this is kind of neat. I, I got a hold of this old um, HP Thin Client, and I actually set it up to run Windows 98, and it does a really good job, like handling Windows 95 and 98 retro games and stuff. Um, it doesn't have any sort of drives on it, but I have this uh, USB, this cheap little USB drive hooked up to a USB CD-ROM drive. So... I'm gonna go ahead and pop uh, pop this guy in there, the internet, lesson one. And we'll see just how goofy this is because I'm sure it's silly as hell. <laughs> Checking for sound resources. There we go, video professor. Thanks for trying Video Professor's computer learning CD. We're sure you'll find it the quickest, easiest way to learn computer skills.
I'm sure I will. <laughs> Before you get started with your lesson, we'd like you to take a few moments of your time to register your product, and would also like to tell you about the added bonus we've included with your lesson. No, thank you. We've put 45 days of free internet access from Earthlink right uh, here on so the CD. On top of the bundled software crap, they've ISP, pop -up blocker put tools, more bundled crap on the discs. And 24-hour customer service, Earthlink is by far the best way to get connected to the internet. We will be using Earthlink in this lesson to learn about all the internet has to offer. For the best oh learning God, experience, look at those pictures. even if you have another internet provider, we suggest you install Earthlink so you can easily follow along with the lesson. Oh, uh, is this just a commercial for Earthlink? Remember, you can install and use Earthlink free for 45 days. Once you understand everything about the internet with Earthlink, you will be able to use any other service. This, this is going to help me understand do what everything you want with the internet. If you prefer not to install Earthlink, oh. don't worry. We will show you how to access Earthlink from any internet service provider so you can still follow along. However, you will not be able to do some things like customize the Earthlink start page or use the Earthlink. Oh, I don't menu. care. You should check out the superior service from Earthlink. You should Please. shut up. Just click one of the options <laughs> below. Oh my god, continue. Uh, remind me later. <sighs> Continue to lesson. Oh my god. Learn the internet. So dramatic. Uh, okay, introduction. Learn how to use, uh, we're not doing that right now. Learn how to use the CDRM. Let's do introduction. <laughs> oh my god, the music. Welcome to my lesson on using the internet. The internet is a powerful tool. You're a powerful tool. Around the world. The internet conveniently <laughs> okay, links people from different places. This is great. I feel like them to communicate and share information. I feel like I've already gotten my dollar twenty nine or whatever two dollars this was out of uh, entertainment's worth out of it because this is great. I'm not going to show all of the CD in this video because it'll just be way too long. But I think I'll do a video on my second channel going through these CDs because this is just the first bit of this has been hilarious. This is so bad. <laughs> Uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Thrifting Time. I know I always have fun making these. And, and as always, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this episode of Thrifting Time. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and if you've got a few minutes, why not check out one of these other videos, or this playlist of other Thrifting Time episodes. And lastly, make sure to follow the social media links down there, because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.